Welcome to the Jan Musen Garden Show on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC. It's your opportunity to learn more about your garden and your yard, about dealing with pests, and about taking care of the birds. You can be part of the show with your questions at 395-1450. That's 395-1450. And now, from DeBrine Seeds on Washington Avenue in Zealand, here's the master gardener, Jan Musen. And good morning, everyone. What a lovely, this is a typical spring day, so we'll take it. It's uh, one more day that God has given us, and it's just a lovely time. I'll tell you, we've been busy at DeBrine's all morning. I think everyone just didn't know what to do, so they came in and shopped, um, which is fine. Everyone's picking up their garden seeds for spring. They're picking up their seed potatoes and onion sets and horseradish and shallots and what else we've got some pansies we've got um um, yeah just about everything is in except for onion plants the texas sweet onion plants will not be here for a couple more weeks it's got to be a little warmer than this and we want a a lot warmer soil than what we've got so um we're we're holding off on that for a couple more weeks but Actually, that is right on time. Mid-April is normally when we get our Texas sweet onion plants. So, so don't worry about it. Um, we'll 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 get those in. The asparagus roots are in both the green and the purple. Um, we've got all the onion sets. Uh, the garlic is in. Gladiola bulbs. I forgot to mention those. We have got seventeen different colors of those. So. Um, yes, they're looking very pretty this year. Lots of pretty colors. Um, you can go online if you want to see all the different colors. I believe I've got them all online. Um, so you can take a look at that if you just go to debrineseed.com. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, we, we want to think gardening at least. Um, you know, there are some people that have got their peas in already. Um, it don't go out this weekend though. Um, it's, wet soil time right now and then we don't want to walk on the soil when it's wet because it com- compacts and then we have more problems but um yeah we want to wait until we it dries out a little bit before you put your peas in the ground um otherwise you know if it's too wet the peas are just going to rot before they would come up so we don't want that to happen we want to give every possible reason to come up and out of the ground um so you know and we've got plenty of time. Don't worry about that, folks. We still have plenty of time to get all of your stuff in. And I know Good Friday, a lot of people want to get their potatoes in. Probably not a t- good time to put your potatoes in. It is too wet out there right now. Um, potatoes wet, rot. That's all they're going to do. So we certainly don't want that. <coughs> so, um, yes, but you can get you can get some things ready, get the garden cleared out, get it staked up to where you want to be. You want to put some trellises up for the peas that you've got out there. Um, you know, get maybe if you've got a hot frame or a hot cold frame, um, that would be great. Get some stuff in there. Um, but hopefully you've got some stuff started indoors. Your tomatoes and peppers should be started indoors. Um, and again, make sure it is... Just the 1st of April, we've got a while before things would go outside. So we don't want to plant them inside now and have them overgrown by the time they get outside. Like putting cucumbers inside right now would be silly. Um, They would be, you know, taking over your entire house by the time they would be ready to go. They, you can plant those right in the ground. You don't need to start those. So, you know, just... We've got a vegetable, you know, growing list. Um, if you want that, you can, you know, go online to debrinesee.com and you can download one of our brochures that has the growing, when to plant, et cetera, list. Um, you might want to download that now. We'll gladly send that to you. Or we've got it at the store, too. Um, so you might want to grab some of those. We've also got brochures online and in the store on just about, everything that you possibly might want to do like if you've never done potatoes or onions or horseradish or asparagus we've got 
brochures on how to plant it, how to care for it. Um, we've got brochures on on almost everything. I think I have I have spent a lot of time uh, putting together brochures. We also have brochures on wildflowers, how to plant them, what's in our wildflowers, um, approximately what's in. Sometimes the mix will change from year to year, but approximately what's in it. Um, and uh, so that's kind of fun. We've also got by the cash register some uh, brochures on how to attract bluebirds and orioles and hummingbirds. So if you want to grab one of those, you're more than welcome to grab one of those or any one of our other brochures that, that are out there. We've got brochures on uh, oh, field seeds. Uh, we've got a book on food plots. We've got we've got all kinds of stuff. So no need to, on how to plant your grass seed. We've got instructions on how to do that. No reason to ever leave our store without full instructions of what you're going to plant. So, you know, that's, that's always good. Um, most of the, t if it's something that we've bagged or whatever, we've got a lot of the instructions of how to do it on there, but you can also grab one of our brochures or whatever for that. And that's kind of the fun thing about shopping at DeBrine's. Not many people bother to do brochures on, they just assume that you know how to plant a potato. Um, honestly, if you get a bag of potatoes off the shelf, they'd look an awful lot like just small potatoes that you would get at the store. Um, there's, they are special. They aren't the ones that you get at the store. Actually, they're more expensive than the ones you get at the store because they're blue tag certified, which means they were grown in soil that has been, it's been inspected while it was growing and inspected when it came out of, when it was harvested, it, when it was in storage. And then right before it got shipped to us, it was inspected um, that it's disease free. Um, and so that's, you know, that good thing that you won't have to worry about that from coming from the potatoes this year. Um, so that's a, a thing you don't have to worry about. But, you know, you don't know, you know, do I, do I cut these up? What do I do? If you cut up a potato and put it instantly in the ground, you might as well just say, I'm just throwing it away because it will just disintegrate in the soil. Um, so if you're going to cut up the potatoes, although most of them are B size, which is meant to go in exactly how it is, just the small potato goes in like it is, um, you can cut them up if they get a little big, um, but you have to let them scab over. So if you cut them up, you're going to have to let them scab over for at least 24 hours, if not more. Um, some people also will dust them with some sulfur before they put them in the ground just to make sure that they're not going to get um, fungal problems. So... Um, if you are going to cut up your potato, remember you don't cut them up and then just put them in the ground. Have to scab over first. Um, onion or onion sets, those are probably the easiest things to plant that I have ever done in my entire life. They come as little bulbs, look like little teeny tiny onions. Stick them in the ground. If you want green onions, stick them in further because then you'll get a nice long white spot, white part of it. Whatever is underground will stay white. Whatever is above ground will turn green. So if you want a longer white part, like for a green onion, stick them down further in the ground. I, You know, I stick it down for as, as much as my index finger. If I want to get an onion, I don't have to stick it down that far. Maybe an inch down, no big deal, just as long as it's covered. And then, you know, in the fall, you can dig it up after the top has fallen over and you'll find an onion down there. This is so fun. Um, I love doing that. I, I have a tendency that I pick probably more for green onions than for regular onions. But when we get the Texas sweet onion plants, those are so fun. Cause you, you just put them in the ground where, right where they were before. You just plant them right in a row or whatever you want to do. And then... In the fall, you dig them up and you get these great big sweet onions. They don't store well. You're going to have to use them pretty quickly within, you know, a couple of weeks. But 
My goodness, they're fun to give away. Um, they are easy to do. Uh, I think onions, to me, are easy to do. I'm sure there are things that can bother them. Wire worms would be one thing. If you have a problem with wire worms in your ground, the onions being an underground root um, will be affected by that. And there are ways you can get around it. Um, we don't have any more any more um, insecticides that go for in-ground insects anymore. So they've all basically been taken off the market. If you have the original seven with carbol in it, you can put that down yet. Um, but we really don't have anything else that's on the market right now for that. But you can take care of wire worms. They take um, two to three years to grow into the click beetle that they turn into. So what you can do in the spring is they're in the ground. Just take the, you know, when you've got the, the ground is a little dry, take it and just kind of turn it over and bring those wire worms up to the top. The birds will love them and they'll eat them. An easy way to do it. Just keep doing that a couple of times before you plant in there. Make sure you always rotate your crops. Don't always put your radishes and all your root vegetables in the same area every year. You know, change it out with your sweet corn or your tomatoes or whatever. But change up the garden every year. I know I'm really guilty of this where, it, oh, I'm so, I'm so used to putting it right here that that's where it's going to be. But, you know, the soil does, you know, kind of build up things after a while. And you probably should rotate 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 that's another thing and the third thing i'm going to tell you to do is sanitation keep the weeds out of the garden the weeds are where the fungus spores live it's where the insects live keep the weeds out i know it's not fun but you know it doesn't really take that long to just take a hoe and just go around um the garden. That's why we have kids. That's what my brother and sister and I did all summer long is kitchen garden had to be hoed. Got get out there and do it. Um, you know, sanitation in the garden is like the number one thing you can do to keep your crops healthy. So just in, you know, if you're going to go on vacation for a while, if you can get somebody in there just to, to get rid of the weeds while you're there, because I'll tell you, some of those weeds like purslane and they can just come in there and just crawl in there and just make a mess. Not that they're hard to get rid of. They pull out rather easily, but they can come in and they can make a big mess. So I remember I had a, when I was in my flower garden once and I had not been out there for a while to, to get rid of the weeds and and I thought, well, you know, it's gladiolas in there. They're tall. They can live above the weeds. And I got a talking to by my neighbor about how it wouldn't take long. And she and I got in there and about 10 minutes later, we're all done. So really, it just takes some work. Gardening is always work, but it's also fun work. We need to stop and take a break, but we will be right back after these messages. <music> Hi, this is Mark Vandenbosch of Zeeland Lumber and Supply. Join me Saturday afternoons at noon for the At Home Show on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC. All right, we are back with the Garden Show here on WHTC. And the uh, phone line is open, 616-395-1450, 616 -316. 395-1450 is the number to call. We've been talking about gardens, a little early to do things, but you can still get things started and get things going inside too. Um, but a lot of people this morning, are, honestly, are shopping at DeBrines um, and getting a lot of stuff for their lawns too. Um, it might be a little early to put down crabgrass preventer. Um, I guess you could put it down. You might want to put it down again in a month. Um, if you're going to put some down right now, just I want to make sure it covers it. If you're going to put down the Greenview um, crabgrass preventer, 
Um, you don't have, you can put it down now and you've got 10 weeks, so you're fine. Um, that If you're going to put the Scots one down, I would definitely put it down again in a month also. Um, but that's neither here nor there, but we're going to, uh, they're, everyone's picking up their four-step programs. I am shocked at how quickly they are going out of the store. Um, I, it is only, it's not even April yet. We've got till Monday and I am surprised how many four-step programs we have sold when it's been cold out. This is, um, incredible. When it was warm, we weren't selling anything. And now all of a sudden it's cold and windy and we're selling them. But yes, if you want them, I would get them. And now, um, the, uh, um, instant rebate on both Scott's and Greenview is still um, current. Still, we're still doing it. So um, the Greenview um, fertilizer programs are, um, I think, pretty reasonable for uh, for the. It's a hundred and forty dollars for a fifteen thousand square foot program. That all four steps. Um, the Scott's is uh, two hundred and forty dollars. Um, little difference there. Um, uh, Greenview is just as good, and it's just as good a fer fertilizer, another national brand. It just doesn't advertise and pat itself on the back all the time like the like the Scots people do. Um, when we did um, Greenview Night and Scots Night, I was kind of, after a while on the Scots Night, I'm like, wow, it's like every everything was kind of magical that they had, all the products. And this will definitely take care of this. And this will definitely take care of that. And I'm like, no, I bet you my customers here could could, could have a problem with that. It's not magical. So, but but anyway, I digress. Um, I like Jeff, but he is kind of in that Scott's mode of I drank the Kool-Aid and this is it. There are other products out there that are just as good, if not better than Scott. So keep that in mind. And some may not cost quite so much. Okay. So, um, spring flowering bulbs. Wow. My crocuses and my hyacinths and my daffodils have been beautiful this spring. Um, my, my tulips are starting to come up. They, they should be, I've got, got another month plus. Um, I don't know. My, my tulips might be a little early. Um, I'm hoping that the city of Holland planted a lot later varieties than I've got because I think mine will probably be up a little bit early, but you never know. Um, I don't really see a lot of change in the weather coming up. It's kind of this 40s and 30s um, for the next at least week. So, yeah, you know, if it was going to be 60 degrees out, I guess I'd be more worried about it, but I, I guess I'm not. Um I know the ones, um, I know if you log on to um, Windmill Island, they will have, um, I think it's, I can't remember what it's called, but you can look on the Windmill Island site and it will tell you where the blooms are looking the best around Holland. Like, oh, this one looks really nice. Like the ones on 8th Street or this one here looks, they're at their, their peak right now. So go on to Windmill Island um website and check that out. And that should be opening up really soon. Um, that is, I love Women Island. I think it's so fun. We don't know what a wonderful thing it is to have a world-class garden in our city that, you know, it's free to go to except during tulip time. Um, my goodness, take advantage of it. It's a beautiful park there. You can look at all the garden beds. Um, very, very pretty. I love that place. Um, well worth going to, well worth checking it out. And I believe they're going, also going to do the community garden again this year. So you might want to check it out also if you need to have, want a place to put something and you don't have, want to grow something and you want to get it in the ground, but you don't have any room, uh, check out that. I know um, community garden at Windmill Island and also Bethel Christian Reformed Church has a large community garden that you can call the secretary at the church and get a spot there. Also, um, they both places have water. They have uh, they have uh, tools there. They've got fences around them, so you might want to check those out if you, 
you know, sometimes you want to do like melons and it's too much space for your, your garden at home. Do them at one of the community gardens. It, that's kind of fun thing to do it. All right. For your roses in your garden, um, let's start taking off those, uh, those uh, rose cones and start removing the mulch from what you put up around there. Check for any rodent damage. Um, we certainly hope there is none. Um, uh, but um, you can also start trimming them back right now. Um, but keep that mulch around just in case it gets cold again and freezes. You need to protect that rose um, for a little bit. I've got some roses that they lived through the winter with no problem. They're kind of the renegades. Um, so I don't have to worry about those. But your good tea roses, you're going to want to, you know, you, you got to baby them sometimes. And, and it's kind of fun to take care of something that really needs your care. Um, there's so many things I have outside that I planted because I didn't want to have a lot of care. And, but, you know, sometimes it's kind of nice to have some of those. But, um, so you might want to check that out. Um, and you might want to, um, the forsythia are blooming right now, so you might want to spray for black spot if you've had that problem in the past. And you may want to put down your first, um, roses take, they're kind of like fruit trees where you kind of spray them or, you know, like every once a month so you get the perfect rose. You might want to put down your first treatment um, for your roses right now also. Um a lot of people, you know, in the spring, you see the moss in your lawn and you get all upset and you just want to kill it. And yes, it is easily killed. We have a moss killer that you can put in a spreader, spread it over your lawn. It will turn the moss black. You can rake it out, get rid of it. But the problem is it will just come right back unless you change the conditions. Um, you know, you're just just because you get it out doesn't mean it's never going to be back there again. It will come right back. So we need to change the conditions. And most of the time, it's because it's too shady. So if you can trim up some tree limbs to get some more sunlight down there, that would be wonderful. Um, and get a little more air circulation around there. Um, sometimes it's just due to poor soil fertility. I've got a spot on my side yard that I never do anything to. And yeah, that gets a little mossy there. It's just cause I don't do anything to it. Um, so that that's that problem there, but most of the time it's due to shade. Um, you just can't get sun needs. I was just reading this. One of the Michigan state extensions, it, they need, it needs six to eight hours of sunlight a day. You don't see beautiful carpeted lawns in a forest unless someone's really doing a lot of work and you're going to come up with, but I've heard there's shade grass seed. Even the grasses that will take some shade need at least six hours of sunlight a day. So, you know, trim up the trees. You can get, then you can get some grass seed underneath them um, just so you get some sunlight down there because grass lives because of the chlorophyll in it that remember the sunlight hits the chlorophyll and that gives the energy for the plant. If you don't have that sunlight hitting the green chlorophyll, um, you're not going to have any food produced for that plant. So, you know, just, you have to go back to third grade science and you go, Oh yeah, that's right. I do need the sun there. So the sun for that plant is vitally important. There are other plants that really can survive in the shade with no problem. So if you've got a spot in the shade and you can't cut down the tree, you can't do anything, you know what? Plant some shade loving plants there and just say that's one plant, you know, just kind of go in the back of your mind. It's not a place for grass. Um, you're just going to have to let go that, that vision and just go with something else. There's lots of ground covers that will look fine there. Um, you can plant some aloe, um, not aloe, some, um, oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of them, and I've got a bunch of them, and the deer love them, but you can plant them around there. They don't care. They'll be in the shade. 
There's lots of stuff that can go in the shade. There's lots of understory trees that you can plant. Um, or you just put some mulch or just some stones there. Um, you can do that too. So maybe, you know, sometimes grass is just not the answer. Um, so we have to keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, um, if you're like me, I've got a spot in my front lawn. I had, um, oh, Adam's telling me I have to stop talking. So I will be right back after the news. Saturdays are special with the David Carrier Show, Money Matters, the Jan Musen Garden Show, and the At Home Show, all on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> this is Jan Musen after hours in that music. <laughs> I like these little jazz things. That's kind of fun to do. Um, but the phone lines are open. 616-395-1450. 616-395-1450 is the number to call. We're talking about grass seed and putting in grass seed right now. I had a lot of snow mold in my front yard. I And I don't know why. I really didn't have any snow piles piled up on it most of the winter. But I do have... and. It isn't huge areas. There's small areas of, of small snow mold. Um, only thing you can do about that right now is break those areas out. Um, if it looks like there isn't enough grass there or it doesn't look like the grass is going to come up there, you might want to put down some grass seed there. Um, you can do that right now. It's not going to germinate right away, but um, you can put it down. I guess I would put down... Um, like a seeding success type of mulch on top of it that would help keep the moisture in and make sure that it will germinate um, when the time comes. Um, so it would be a good idea. Also a good idea when you put down grass seed, especially on a larger area, to put down some um, uh, fertilizer at the same time. Um, Scott's does have a, of a product that when you put down the grass seed, um, you can put down the starter fertilizer, but it also has weed preventer in it. So, And the weed preventer will last for six weeks. So you've got six weeks after you put this down where no weeds are going to come up and you can um, concentrate just on your grass seed. So I think that's a wonderful idea. It really gives it um, a time to, uh, to get up and get growing before, you know, and get be strong enough so... Well, you still can't put weed killer on it after six weeks, but you still you got that you got that six weeks um, head start. So I think that's a great idea. So you might want to think about the Scott's Turf Builder Starter Food for New Grass Plus Weed Preventer. I wish it would have a quicker, cuter name than that, but that's what it is right now. Um, seeding Success by Greenview is something that you can put on top of it and it looks like a mulch. My only thing is don't spread it that thick. When it gets wet, it expands. And I made the mistake of putting way too much down, and it just was like this mat of stuff over top of my lawn. So uh, do it sparingly. Don't put it all on top of the lawn. Um, phone number um, 616-395-1450 if you want to give us a call, 616 616- Three nine five one four five zero is the number to call. Um, if you still have not cut down your um, your uh, decorative grasses and you kept them up all winter because they do look pretty blowing in the wind during the winter, but they need to come down because that's the dead part of the grass. So you know the live part is down below. So you got to cut this down. And I'll tell you, most of the time you cut it down. And it just falls everywhere, and it's a big mess. So I want you to go out there, if you haven't cut it down yet, with a bungee cord and just a hand trimmer. That's all you're going to need. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the bungee cord, and you're going to put that around the decorative grasses so it goes all the way around. And so it nice, makes it a nice, t- tight, compact thing. 
and then uh, it would put it up about oh a foot foot and a half above the ground so it gives you plenty of time to get in there with your little hand clipper and then you can just cut right down there near the you know one to two inches away from the ground and you can get it all cut off and it all falls down together it isn't all over the place blowing in the wind making a mess so the bungee cord hand clipper you can cl clip down all of your um decorative grasses right now or if you've got even a you know some print a large perennial that hasn't completely disintegrated yet you can use the bungee cord for that and your hand trimmer get those get the dead part that's above ground out of there right now otherwise it's just going to compete with what's coming up out of the ground so we need to get rid of that dead stuff that's vitally important but the bungee cord, I thought, I saw someone do that. I thought that was the most ingenious idea ever. And I had just gotten done trimming mine, and mine, I had to sit there and, uh, oh, it was horrible. It, it was everywhere. And the bungee cord just kept it all right in one spot. I, I love it when we get these little garden uh, easy ideas to do. That works extremely well. Um. You should have had. You should have all of your shrubs and trees uh, trimmed by now. Um, I don't know where your peach trees are right now. Um, you should have your apple and pear and and plum trees all uh, done. Te peach trees you don't do right away. You wait until the buds on the trees begin to swell, and I don't think we're near that yet. But wait until that before you start trimming your peach trees. I didn't know this, but peach trees really are native to um, way further south in here. We're about at the furthest northern line of where peaches will grow. So that's why, you know, it doesn't take much to absolutely destroy a peach crop. So we have to really watch a peach tree. If you've got lucky enough to have one of those, um, you want to get some sort of lime sulfur or fruit tree spray on them. Um, in the fall to prevent that peach leaf curl and if you have it you'll know what it is and if you've never had it and all of a sudden you see it it that just describes it peach leaf curl the leaves just curl up and the, it, they just look kind of puckered and you think well what's going on but honestly um you will not have any crop that year if you have that so you need to get down that you know, some sort of fungal spray in the fall usually is, is the most helpful. You can get it down first thing in the spring. Um, you you just don't want that fungus to get down inside those blossoms. So you want to get that fungicide on before that. Um, if you haven't done a dormant oil spray yet on your trees, um, especially on your fruit trees and any of your bushes that might get some sort of scab on it, um, get that dormant oil spray down you got to do it when it's above zero or above zero above 32 <laughs> there's a big difference there isn't there but above 32 for 24 hours um, and get that dormant oil on there make sure you spray it on all of the branches and on the um, on the bark because you're going to want to suffocate anything that's living there we need to stop and take a break but we will be back with the garden show after that happens Weekday mornings at 7.55 a.m. Catch the huge interview with me, Bill Simonson, on 99.7 and 14.50 WHTC. I like this music. All right. All right. Um, phone lines are open. 616-395-1450. 616-395-1450. Sixteen fifty is the number to call. This is the time of year I want to talk about birds. Now, um, they're they're coming back. The the uh, migrants that left us all winter are starting to come back. So it is the time to get up those bluebird houses. Or if you left them up all winter long, it's time to take them down, clean them out well, and put them back up. Or 
put up any other birdhouses that you might have, or if you again, if you left them out all winter, they were probably used by the little birds during the winter when it was cold. They like to go in there in groups of, uh, they can get like 20 of them in a bluebird box. And so you might want to get in there, clean it out. We don't want to have any mites or anything like that left in there and put it back up. Um, you might want to put out some nesting material because some of the the guys that are back right now, they build nests for the um, females that are coming. So you, if you want to put something out, please do not put out um, the dryer lint. That is not good for the birds. Once it gets wet, it just collapses. And if the birds put that in there thinking it's like hair and it will you know, withstand water, um, they won't, and you might lose some uh, birds through those little holes. So no dryer lint. But you can put out small pieces of yarn or string. Um, please don't make it more than like two inches long. Um, otherwise, if you make it too long, they can wrap around the little bird's legs. And, and the, again, we might lose a bird. So um, make it smaller, two inches or long. Um, when I brush my cat out. I put the hair out on my deck and the birds just swoop in for that. They love that stuff. So if you've got some lucky enough to have some animals in your house and you brush their hair quite often, put that hair out on the deck. They, they will love it. Or if you've got, you know, cut your hair or whatever, put it out there. They'll love that. Um, and it, it's fine. It's not going to make them hate or you know, like cats or like people um, just because they had the hair in there. But it's nice, soft. Um, um, it's kind of like the down. I'll tell you, when my ducks, when they molt every spring, um, it, it's it's just feathers all over the backyard. And I'll tell you, lots of, lots of birds are picking up those feathers and flying away with them, too. So it's fun to watch those birds when they do that. But Again, they love my cat's hair. They always love that. Um, if you want to get uh, some of the migrants in, you're going to have to put up, well, A, a bluebird, a bluebird house or two. Um, they're going to have to put out some water for them, food. Um, a lot of the spring migrants really like insects, so you might want to think about putting up some suet or putting up some putting up some mealworms out in the backyard or mixing mealworms in with your food. I'll tell you, when you do that, the birds just love you. Um, and uh, I, right now, we should be getting back during the month of March. Um, we should have gotten back the kill deer, the morning dove. I've got a bunch of those. Robins, they're everywhere. Um, Eastern bluebirds, so they, they're back in force. Um, cedar waxwings, I've seen those already by my feeders, too. Um, the red winged blackbird is back. Um, the grackle, unfortunately, is back. Um, the eastern meadowlark should be back. Um, the goldfinch, if it did not leave for the winter, should be back by now. So, And they're just starting to kind of get a little bit of yellow on them. Um, they're, they're kind of, otherwise they're kind of olivey color. You wouldn't notice them as a goldfinch. Uh, the song sparrow is back. Um, the crows are back. Red-tailed hawks are here, as well as the turkey vultures. And there's a whole list of things that are coming up in April. And, you know, we're going to have some fun birds coming up. We're going to have, like, the indigo buntings, the scarlet tanagers, and um, we get the uh, rose-breasted grosbeaks speaks up. Um, it's fun. I love this time of year. We get so many cool, cool um, birds coming up. Um so let's uh, get out there and watch them, put some food out for them. My no waste mix works extremely well. The Mr. B's fruit and nut is going like crazy because it's got fruit. It's got cranberries and pineapple and cherries and raisins in it. It's got nuts. It's got cashews, almonds, all of those. Um, and it's got those little suet balls. Um, the birds just love them. I, I put out, it's, also in my um, no waste mix, those little suet balls, and I'll throw that on the ground underneath the feeder. And the robins at my house love those. They're all over those. Um, 
I still have little juncos, and they are all over anything you put outside and hits the ground. So, yes, there's lots of little birds out there, and they're eating. And I've got um, some rabbits in my backyard. They can stay back there as long as they don't come to my front yard. I'm just perfectly happy with that. But they got to stay in the backyard. Um, I've got them. They're under the bird feeder in the morning, too. My cat is absolutely fascinated by, I guess it's the Easter bunny. I don't know for sure, but all of a sudden he showed up this week or she, um, my cat is absolutely just, if that rabbit is anywhere in the backyard, that cat is glued to the window. Um, I could, he could care less whether I'm going to feed him breakfast or not. Just kind of odd and unusual. Normally he's right there when breakfast is, but no, not when the bunny's downstairs. So, I have a I have a good bird watcher in my my cat. Um, so if you've got a cat or a dog that you know otherwise sits at home all day long and doesn't know what to do, putting filling up the bird feeders, you know, putting out a bird bath, um, getting a source of water out there, it makes a whole lot of difference. There's a whole lot going on um, out there, and they just seem to love it. Butterball loves it when we've got um, the the uh, skids of uh, bird seed out there because we get all kinds of little birds out there. And he just sits there and watches them all day long going back and forth. Um, loves, he's a good bird watcher too. So it's not just me watching the birds at my house. It's the cat too. So, yes, it, you know, it's kind of fun. Uh, none, not many of my neighbors put out a bird feeder. So um, they really, well... One, two doors down does, but otherwise I don't think anyone really in my immediate neighborhood does. So it's kind of nice. We, we have a little, you know, you know, Hey, the, all the finches are up by my feeder right now. And then all of a sudden I won't see anybody, but yeah, two doors down, I can see they're all by his feeder, but um, it, it's kind of a fun little thing, but it's, it is fun to watch the birds. I was talking to my friend in a Venezuela this week. I Sent her some pictures of the butterfly show in Grand Rapids at Meyer Garden, and she was fascinated by that. Then I took a picture of my backyard covered with snow last week, and all my little bird birds were out in the middle of the lake, so I took a picture of that, and she was fascinated by that. She thought the birds in the backyard were absolutely wonderful things, so I guess I take you know, I just kind of look at it like it's no big deal. But, you know, sometimes you got to look at it in the eyes of someone that doesn't see that sort of thing much. I mean, she sees all kinds of wonderful, wonderful different birds. But, you know, I don't get to see that. But she thought mine were wonderful. Well, anyway, I will be back Tuesday morning at 845 with Dan for the garden party. I will be on Tuesday morning from 10 until 11 with Gary on Talk of the Town. But the most important thing, I'll be back here next Saturday at 11.05 for the garden show. And until then, go green. You've been listening to the Jan Musen Garden Show on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. If you wish to hear this or other programs hosted by the Master Gardener from DeBrine Seeds in Zealand, check out the podcast section of our website, whtc.com and listen or download for free. The Jan Musen Garden Show is a presentation of 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.